As Russia, in assuming the presidency of the United Nations Security Council, has undertaken, as always, to act transparently and impartially, I would like to explain in an open manner the situation regarding its participation in today's meeting on Ukraine. The Secretariat yesterday received a letter from the permanent representative of that country requesting the right to speak at this meeting. Not only that, unlike all other requests, including Poland and the European Union, it was drafted in flagrant violence violation of established practice and is not addressed to the President of the United Nations Security Council, but it does not even contain basic protocol formulas accepted in diplomatic practice. The only sentence in it is a request to allow Ukraine to attend the meeting. This is the letter. It is not clear to whom it is addressed. And here are the letters from Poland and the European Union which contain all the necessary elements of an address to the chairperson of the Security Council in the protocol formula of politeness. We have informed council members about the request from Ukraine. I would like to emphasize that we see no problem in allowing it to participate in the meeting as a country whose interests are affected by an item on the agenda. This is in accordance with the rules of the procedure. We immediately broadcast a signal that as soon as the chairmanship received the correct form of the request for Ukraine's participation in the meeting, with the agreement of the members of the Security Council, it would be confirmed. However, the Ukrainian delegation has still not sent a correct request. I believe that the point is that it is fundamentally important for them to show that they are above the rules and customs established in the Security Council, and, unlike other delegations requesting under the Rule of 30, including European states, have the right to dictate their own rules of the game. This we, as a chairmanship, cannot allow. The rules are the same for everyone. This has ensured the functioning of the United Nations Security Council for almost 80 years. The Ukrainian delegation's entry is nothing but an attempt to undermine the authority of the Council. Because the presidency is not a country, it is an institution. I hope that all colleagues on the Security Council realize that. We nevertheless, in the absence of objection from other members of the Council, allow Ukraine to participate in today's meeting, but only in the light of the fact that this has been requested by a member of the Security Council, the United States. We intend to honor the request of the American delegation in accordance with the Council's rules of the procedure. We regret that Ukraine is unable to act independently even in such an essentially purely procedural matter as participation in a meeting of the UN Security Council, and even in this it is forced to be led by its sponsors. I ask the Secretary to invite Ukraine to participate in this meeting. I would like to begin by thanking France and Ecuador for convening this meeting. As is evident from the statements by our Western colleagues, who, by the way, were very succinct, the topic of the alleged Russian strike on the children's hospital, for which they have gathered us today, is clearly not favorable to them and they have probably seen numerous analyses of what happened using photos and video, from which it clearly follows that it was a Ukrainian air defense missile. Hence the wonders of verbal equilibrium that the Western members of the Security Council are demonstrating today, using any words and any means to try to shield the Kiev regime. For us, on the other hand, this meeting is an opportunity to tell the truth about what happened. However, as is well known, our Western colleagues are not interested in the truth and in the best traditions of the provocations in Bucha or the Mariupol hospital, which was mentioned today. They tried to pass off wishful thinking by condemning the allegedly targeted strike by the Russian armed forces against a children's medical facility. The deceitfulness of such tactics can be seen with the naked eye. And this was immediately noticed by the Ukrainians themselves, as videos of the hit on the hospital complex quickly appeared on the Internet and crossed out all the streams of Kiev and Western propagandists. Here are links to the most popular, most complete publications. This is a QR code. Please pay attention. And here's what Ukrainian telegram channels, which are now the only source of information for their compatriots that is not censored by the Ukrainian authorities, published in the wake of the incident. I quote,
The bank over, that is, the office of the president, ordered to publish and disperse the information about strike only on the children's clinic Okmudit, in order to way to divert attention from other attacks and very interesting objects there. And people could ask the authorities why military objects are directly neighboring residential houses and hospitals. B. To try to raise the morale of the army and the people on the basis of hatred towards the enemy, saying that he hit children on purpose, although everyone knows that it was a downed missile. C. To distract the masses from the daily lawlessness of the authorities, corruption, increase of tariffs, increase of prices, increase of disappointment of the masses, etc. D. To divert attention from the constant retreat of the Ukrainian armed forces. E. To add another reason to justify unlimited Z mobilization. F. To hype in the Western press before the NATO summit. End quote. And here is another quote. As for the strike on the Okmudit hospital, everything is clear. It was an air defense missile of the NASAMs that went astray and flew into the building near the children's clinic building. Western air defenses are also often wrong. Most likely, it lost its target in the air and picked up the heat signal from the hospital, confusing the target. This was also the case when the air defense of Ukraine hit Poland, killing Poles in the tractor. The X-101 missile would have done a lot more damage to the building it hit. We write all the time that air defense missiles often go astray. There have been many tragedies like this before. And Bankova, that is the office of the president, has been constantly lying to the people that it is the Russians hitting specifically on residential buildings. Bankova needs to constantly fuel hatred in the masses and justify the continuation of the war with such artificial tragedies. The military even admitted that many tragedies are the work of their air defense systems. These are quotes from Ukrainian publics. These are not my words. Colleagues, now I hope you understand that no matter how much the Kiev regime and its Western sponsors try to present this tragedy as the result of a targeted Russian strike, even in the eyes of ordinary Ukrainians, this version does not stand up to any criticism in these circumstances. We are extremely sorry that the Security Council has been drawn into the dirty propaganda campaign of Kiev and its accomplices. We would like to ask Mr. Zhevnev a question. How did he go out on the street and realize that the hospital had been hit by a Russian attack? Who provided him with such data that contradicts the truth and common sense? And does he realize that if it had been a Russian missile, there would have been nothing left of the building, and the children and most of the adults would have been killed rather than wounded? But judging by the dark screen, we are unlikely to hear an answer to this question from Mr. Shovnev. We have repeatedly said that Russia does not strike civilian objects in Ukraine. If we talk about the strikes of the Russian Air Force, which were indeed carried out on the facilities of the military industry of Ukraine and air bases of the armed forces, one of the targets in Kiev was the Kiev Artyom factory, one of the largest enterprises of the Akroboron Prom concern. This is one of the main producers of aircraft missiles, weapons and ammunition, and this target, according to the data of objective control and according to the testimonies of Kiev citizens themselves, was hit, since the plant is located about two kilometers from the Okmudit Children's Hospital. There is every reason to believe that the Ukrainian air defense missile that hit it was designed to intercept that Russian missile that hit the plant. Such tragedies could have been avoided if the Kiev regime had not deployed air defense systems and heavy weapons in residential neighborhoods. 
However, his Western sponsors prefer to turn a blind eye to this point. We cannot fail to mention the fact that Ukrainians themselves have noticed a remarkable trend in social networks. The tragedy of an air defense missile hitting a children's hospital occurred exactly on the eve of the NATO summit. Moreover, this is the third NATO summit since the beginning of the special military operation, and similar situations have occurred before each of them. So it was on June 27, 2022, when Ukrainian media reported about an explosion in a shopping center in Kremenchuk, Poltava region, when there were supposedly hundreds of people in it. In reality, the fire in the shopping center, which was not functioning, was caused by the detonation of ammunition from the United States and European countries stored in a nearby building. This was also the case when on the night of the 6th of July, 2023, the Russian Air Force struck the temporary deployment points of the Ukrainian armed forces and foreign mercenaries in Lviv. It is noteworthy that the mayor of the city of Lviv, Sadovy, admitted that residential houses were damaged by the debris of air defense missiles. And in all cases, these situations were maximally played by the head of the Kiev clique in order to get new weapons for Ukraine. It's a curious trend, isn't it? And it is quite revealing that it is noticed by the Ukrainian information resources themselves. Speaking of which, another question begs to be asked. And this is to the words of the Slovenian permanent representative about the confirmed data on the Russian missile strike on the Okmedit hospital. Videos posted by Ukrainian internet users show five Russian air defense missiles hitting the Artyom plant one after another without any interference or damage. Similarly, a lone Ukrainian air defense missile can be seen flying into the area of the Okmedit children's hospital without any damage or interference. It cannot be confused with anything else by its clearly distinguishable characteristic plumage and other characteristics. How is it that the Ukrainian air defense misses all five strikes on the factory but clearly hits the children's hospital? Perhaps a representative of the Kiev regime can answer this question. We are also waiting for a response from the Norwegian authorities who apparently supplied Zelensky's click with this NASM's installation. Did they authorize it to be used to hit a children's hospital and also to be placed in residential areas? On this background, and in full compliance with his methodology, the head of the president's office, Yermak, has already managed to make a statement on the impossibility of negotiations with Russia. There is no doubt that the Ukrainian leadership will use today's situation as a pretext for further ignoring the demands of Ukrainian society and indeed of the entire world society the entire world community to find a peaceful solution to the Ukrainian crisis. It is understandable, because in such a scenario the need to extend martial law will disappear, and this will entail the need to hold elections, which the Kiev clique, which has lost its legitimacy, fears most of all, realizing the extremely negative attitude of the population towards itself, and therefore prefers to sacrifice tens, if not hundreds of thousands of its fellow citizens to be sent to a senseless meat grinder. For our part, we have repeatedly advocated the start of negotiations on a cessation of hostilities. But it must be a cessation, not a suspension, to give Kiev an opportunity to lick its wounds and arm itself. In addition, the root causes of the Ukrainian crisis must be addressed. Without that, there will be no sustainable and long-term peace. Our conditions for ending the conflict were outlined in detail by President Putin on June 14 at a meeting with foreign policy officials.
We also appreciate initiatives by all states that are aimed at a genuine ceasefire and taking into account our legitimate concerns. Rather than promoting propaganda puff pieces like the Pseudo Peace Conference in Switzerland. As long as Kiev and its sponsors remain deaf to the calls to use diplomacy, we will be forced to continue to push Ukraine to make peace and to address the root causes of the current crisis situation militarily.